Hi guys, I'm Matt Schlicht uh, from Zapchain, and I'm here with Matt Slater, CEO of Hedgie, and we are going to teach you about Bitcoin. Nice. Uh, welcome. Do you want to talk a little bit about Hedgie and what you guys do? Yeah, sure. Um, so we are using the Bitcoin technology of the blockchain to do financial contracts. And the first thing we're doing is removing volatility from Bitcoin. So we have a stable price. And as you know, as you can imagine, the price of Bitcoin is going up and down all the time. To be able to have a fixed price can be really valuable for a merchant, a miner, a business owner, whoever. Got it. So if I'm a merchant and I'm accepting Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is constantly in the market, it's going up and down, but I need to make sure that I have a set amount so I can go buy more product or right. you know pay whatever. Hedgie is going to allow me to make sure that if it's worth $10,000 a day, it's worth $10,000 tomorrow. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. That's huge. It's big, yeah. Cool. Um, so thank you for being here. Sure. Um, I think that there's a lot of misconceptions about Bitcoin. Um, it's really hard to understand, and it's awesome that you're going to help us kind of explain that. And I th so I think one of the big things that people don't understand right now is people hear Bitcoin and they think currency. And mm -hmm. they think Bitcoin is like a dollar or, you know, the, yeah. the euro. Um, but that's not, not actually the whole story, and that's not actually why so many people are excited about it. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about the difference between Bitcoin, the currency, and kind of Bitcoin, uh, like the protocol and the platform. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you, you nailed that on the head. There's a big misconception, especially in the media, between Bitcoin, the technology, and Bitcoin, the currency. And the easiest way to distinguish is Bitcoin with a capital B is the blockchain, which is the technology, and Bitcoin with a small b is the currency that's traded. And so a lot of the thought leaders in the space talk about the breakthrough being in blockchain. And the reason why it's such a big deal is because they've made the first entirely secure protocol for money. So the money is, in, what, in a decentralized way, you're able to send and receive value in a de decentralized trust way. So if I send you a Bitcoin and I send someone else a Bitcoin, the same Bitcoin, how do you know that the one I sent you is correct? Well, in the banking world, they've done this through a number of banks and middlemen involved, verifying with each other that I had one Bitcoin in my account and I sent it to you, therefore I can't send it to somebody else. Bitcoin has done this in lines of code and through a network of computers that all agree that the Bitcoin I sent you is sent first, therefore I can't send it. So that's what's done in the, uh, on the, what's called the protocol, and that's prevent the double spend, and that's what's such a big breakthrough. So that's what blockchain is. So that's a blockchain. So is. blockchain is specifically this technology that allows us to have, you know, a decentralized system. There's no government that can like print more money or, right. you know, change the ledger, mm. right? Cool. And then Bitcoin with a small b, as you just hinted, is the currency. So that's what I'm sending you. So you Bitcoin... Are you going to? Yeah, I can send you some Bitcoin. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, so Bitcoin with a capital B is what determines the same Bitcoin hasn't been spent twice. And book Bitcoin with a small b is what I'm sending you. That makes sense. Um, it's also a little complicated still. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> not easy. So <laughs> capital B means technology. Mm -hmm. Lowercase b is like Matt's going to send you all his Bitcoins. Yeah. After the after you watch this, um, so what is it going to take you think to get big like to get adoption for Bitcoin? Like, what does that look like? You know, is sure. everybody going to be spending Bitcoins with a lowercase b on lunch and beer, and is that what they're going to be doing, or is it more the technology and the blockchain and the capital B? So it's interesting. I think at first it's going to be the big B, the blockchain, that's going to get widespread adoption first. But what I love about Bitcoin, what's so fascinating, is that there isn't just one use for Bitcoin. There's many, many different types of applications that Bitcoin can be used for. So you're going to see, I think, adoption in different areas. You're going to see adoption of the currency as a store of value in places outside the U.S. that have pretty bad economies. For example, Argentina that has lots of inflation. People there are using it as a store of value. Whereas people in a first world, I mean, uh, in the U.S., for example, are using it as a payment infrastructure. So right. I can send money to someone in Europe for free. I don't have to use the banks and do wire fees. I can also do that instantaneously. 
So right there, there's two different use cases, but it's exactly the same technology. So in order for everyone to start doing this, like what do you think has to happen? I think first, Bitcoin has to overcome its branding problem. There, the media is really bad at reporting on Bitcoin. It's usually about negative attacks on Bitcoin, what's the, the security behind, uh, that's involved. So I feel like we've been past the first era of Bitcoin, which is the original players. You know, Mt. Gox is gone, right. which is great. Now we're le on to level two security, which involves something called multi-sig. And that's going to allow for Mt. Gox things to not happen. So we're getting there. It's slowly developing. I think until it's at version 1.0, when it's consumer friendly, when you have nice designs in the apps that are coming out, then you'll start to see consumers get more involved. But I think first movers are actually going to be more B2B side. So Bitcoin will be the background, for example, payment rails that connect banks or background payment rails that connect countries who are people are sending money between countries. I think you'll see the B2B space adopt it first before you see massive consumer adoption. If that even happens. Yeah, if that even happens. You may not know you're using Bitcoin, but you are actually using Bitcoin. I think a good analogy is Gmail. Before there was a nice email client that you can just click compose and start typing, email wasn't, it was limited to the few computers that were using it. Right. So, and just like the internet, when you look back at the internet, uh, Mark Andreessen's Netscape. Before Netscape, the consumer wasn't really on the internet. Right. Well, and the internet was a really complicated subject. Yeah. And in order to understand, like the internet back then meant actually a lot of technical things. It didn't mean like, oh, I'm going to go on Facebook and I'm going to go talk yeah. to this person, right? It was no, really, yeah. really technical. <laughs> so I guess what you're saying is Bitcoin will get mass adoption when there's like a Netscape for Bitcoin. Yeah. Exactly. I think Coinbase is probably the farthest along in developing that. They're making it super easy where you just send it like email, you have a username, you're using your email to send money to people. So that's, the, I, I, in my opinion, the, the best consumer app out there right now. Right. It's like almost like PayPal, but with Bitcoin yeah. instead. Right? Exactly. So you, you mentioned multisig, um, and I'm sure a lot of people watching probably don't know exactly what multisig is because that also like Bitcoin, sounds really crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so we have Bitcoin, the technology, and there's a lot of interesting things you can do with that. Um, one of them would be multi-sig, um, but there's a lot of other innovations that Bitcoin enables us to do. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, what are some of the things that we can use Bitcoin to, uh, you know, to innovate with? Do you want to talk about multi-sig first? Yeah, let's, sure. let's get a short explanation of what multi-sig is. I think I like to use the analogy of attaching a bike to a bike rack with three locks. And each of those locks are from three different people. So you, all three of us, we, we lock the one bike to the bike rack. Now it's locked in there. The bike rack owns that bike, in this case the Bitcoin. The blockchain owns the Bitcoin. In order to get the bike off the rack, all of us are going to need to use our keys to unlock our locks and release it. So that allows for a hacker coming in. And if a hacker steals my key and they try to get the bike, well, they can only unlock one of the locks. The bike still has two locks that are connecting it to the, to the rack. So that allows for, in Mt. Gox's case, there was one key. Right. And they got the key and they, and they hacked a lot of the Bitcoin. Which was horrible. Yeah, which was horrible. And the media blew it up and there was, you know, uh, people were saying this is the end of Bitcoin. And obviously, it's not the end of Bitcoin. The Bitcoin community was laughing it off because, uh, they all knew it was going to happen. It was there were warning. Anyway, there were warning signals. So now that we're on version two of security in Bitcoin, pretty much all Bitcoin websites are going to have this multi-sig implemented. Got it. So multi-sig is basically like I alone cannot decide to send my Bitcoin somewhere. Yeah, you can even do deterministic, which is a fancy way of saying hierarchies of who has more power. So, for example, if there's three locks on that bike, one person could have a key that unlocks all of them. Right. Or one person could have a key that has to be used first before any, uh, anyone else can use it. So you need approval, for example. So because it's a technology, it's always being implemented, uh, it's always being innovated on, and there's new use cases for it all the time. 
Cool. I mean, it's I'd much rather my bitcoins be secured with multisig. Yeah, definitely. You don't sure. want it. Anything else you don't want, you only want multi-sig. Yeah, so that's, and I, I think that's awesome because it's, we had Mt. Gox, you know, around like $400 million worth of mm -hmm. Bitcoins were stolen. Um, if they'd had multi-sig, which is kind of a recent development, or at least people are, Bitcoin companies are adopting multi-sig now to make sure that they are not the next Mt. Gox and yeah. the media is not misinterpreting their story and telling that to everybody. Um, what are some other things that have recently happened um, in Bitcoin, related to just new new things that you can do that are happening right now because of Bitcoin, um, mostly as a, a, a technology. One area that has seen some venture capital recently is called crypto crowdfunding or crypto equity, which is you take Kickstarter and you instead of it being uh, a Kickstarter model, people are investing Bitcoins into this company or project. And instead of receiving a t-shirt, they're actually receiving equity in the company. And you're able to do a form of venture crowdfunding using Bitcoin, using the blockchain, without uh, needing all of the middle parties and everything is auditable. Because Bitcoin's a public ledger, you can trace every transaction that has gone into the company. And you can also trace every token in this case, a share of the company that has been issued to the shareholders. So there's one called Swarm, there's one called Coinify that's doing this. Um, there's a number of different uh, startups that are in the space right now. So that's, I, in my opinion, a really big application of uh, the new applications of Bitcoin. Yeah, and, and I think it, um, because it's built on blockchain technology, one, like you said, you can audit it and you can track all the transactions and. Um, the other thing that's pretty interesting about it is that you can, uh, anybody that buys some of this crypto equity, um, the company can automatically be paying out like dividends. Yeah. Which is a pretty yeah, cool use. Exactly. There was uh, a quick story. There was a company called Satoshi Dice, 2011 to 2012. It was a gambling site online where people would go on, use Bitcoin to gamble. And this guy, issued, uh, took his company public, IPO'd his company on the Bitcoin blockchain, issued shares to totally anonymous to people uh, for Bitcoin, and he then paid dividends on those shares to those shareholders, and then the company was acquired by a private buyer uh, about nine months later for $12 million, and all those shareholders were paid a premium above their IPO price. So all that was done on blockchain without the oversight of the SEC, without any banks involved, without any middlemen involved, and entirely anonymous. So that was early in Bitcoin, and that has already happened. So that's the level of disruption that's taking place. Right, and that, that's awesome because the, the people that invested and helped build up Satoshi Dice got more of a reward or a bigger piece of the acquisition mm. than they would if they were using middlemen. Yeah, and he also, if he was running, if, you know, you're running a gambling site, how can you, first of all, you, how can you IPO your company to people you don't know? Well, Bitcoin allows you to do that securely so that you can't defraud people, essentially. Right, and I guess, so something like Kickstarter, which is like, I'm going to do this project, I need to raise this amount of money, and then I'm going to go do it, maybe you'll get a t-shirt out of it. This right. is more, you actually kind of own this thing that's alive. And you could even, I mean, can you sell that? Could yeah, you, if could there's you trade a, that? so that's what, those are being built as well, eventually. Um, stock markets for shares of those type of companies. That's the next level. So all that is in the pipeline of development. And that's what gets me so excited is you're talking about reinventing entire industries, uh, moving, moving existing industries onto blockchain using blockchain technology. So stock markets on the blockchain, Kickstarter, as we just talked about on the blockchain, uh, assets on the blockchain. Is, um, that, is that happening already? Uh, it's still early, but it yeah. is happening. There's a few, um, for example, a deed to a house can be put on the blockchain and traded so you can verify who owns that house just from looking up on the blockchain. So you remove the need for any record keeping, which is a big deal. Or paper. 
Or paper, yeah. Which is like the government's main way of tracking things mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's, Which is there's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, government could, the government actually would love Bitcoin because everything's traceable. Yeah, and there's, I mean, and they're still trying to decide how they feel about it. But yeah. we would like the government to use blockchain uh -huh. for all their records. Yes, and then because we can verify all their records. <laughs> right, and so hopefully, I mean, that, that probably falls into like something that's not happening now, but like what could happen. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I th that's what I know we're really excited about. Um, even less of like what's happening now and more excited about like what could happen. What, what, what is blockchain going to do to the world in a year, in five years, in 10 years, in 50 years? Right. You know, maybe the U.S. government is totally using blockchain technology in some amount of time. Yeah. Um, like what else do you think we could see happen? Like how could blockchain, you know, the Bitcoin technology kind of impact the world? Yeah, that's a great question. So this, the reason why I'm so excited about Bitcoin and why it, it keeps me up at night and I think about it all the time is because there's not just one place of disruption for Bitcoin. It has such a variety of different applications. So you asked um, going forward, one really interesting use case for Bitcoin is, to, is in stock markets. I think Patrick Byrne, who's a CEO over stock, has published and has um, already has a team working on creating the first publicly traded crypto equity. It's a fancy way of saying his company Overstock that it trades on NASDAQ. Which was one of the first companies to start accepting Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. I think that was early, like January this year. Yep. And he wants to issue a share of Overstock using the blockchain. And so if that happens, you could see entire stock markets moving over onto a blockchain infrastructure so that all trades are done, uh, they're already done electronically, but verifiable, right. audit trails, everything, uh, you can't naked short sell, which is a, a big problem that Patrick has talked about a lot. And so that's what, uh, plus you remove a lot of the middlemen involved. For example, in the stock market today, somebody owns the asset, say I buy a stock, I own the stock, but somebody else is doing the exchange Somebody else is ta sell, uh, taking it from someone else and selling it to me. Somebody else is actually right. holding the asset. Like Scott Trade, yeah. for example. Um, right. yeah, there's even more, com more parties involved. There's a custodian. Yep. So I own it, but somebody else is holding it. And then another party is exchanging it. And then the banks are involved. It's just there's so many middlemen involved. Which when you compare that to Bitcoin, that sounds way more complicated. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Nobody understands the banking system, nor the stock market system. Yep. So. To say, to say we don't understand Bitcoin, therefore it's not good, is also, I think, a fallacy. Yeah, I mean, and this is what we were talking about before. It's like most people will probably never fully understand how Bitcoin technology works, but most people also don't, don't understand how they have electricity in their house, and they use that all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. There's so many things people don't understand. People don't understand email, but we don't need to understand email. It just works. Right. So actually, my opinion of, of Bitcoin going forward is that it does become a, a invisible technology where you're using it. You sure you can say I use Bitcoin, but you don't need to know how it works. It just does what you want it to do. Right. Like I don't know what languages, what programming languages Facebook's built on top of. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, cool. What what else? What else is there? There's got to be a lot of other things. So uh, micropayments are something that can be uh, a really interesting use case. There's something called the Dogecoin tip bot. So Dogecoin, uh, just quickly, is just another version of Bitcoin. It's just called Dogecoin. Um, it's actually awesome. So <laughs> you guys may have heard of Dogecoin. Dogecoin is like Bitcoin, but instead of a B, it's a face of a Shiba Inu, which is like a really cute <laughs> puppy. Yeah. So Dogecoin is awesome. I mean, there's way more Dogecoin that will ever be created. Uh, so people are owning 10,000 Dogecoin at a time. And what's interesting is this has caused a lot of people to give them away and spend them actually almost more than Bitcoin. Well, and it's, that sounds like a lot too. Like 10,000 Dogecoin, 10, yeah. Like you got 10,000 of anything. Like you're right, exactly. You're Instead of having 0 .001 Bitcoin or 0 .01 Bitcoin. Right, which just makes me feel bad. Right, yeah. So it's a, it's a, a decimal thing, but anyway. 
Uh, with the Dogecoin tip bot, you can tip Redditors for their comments. But what's really interesting use case of that is if you're an author or you're a blogger and you put up a blog post, you could have you could monetize those blog posts through tips, for example. So you don't have to take anyone's you know for a dollar or for fifty cents. I'm not going to give my credit card information. It's just too big a barrier to entry. But you put a Bitcoin address or eventually just a, a button because you have your Coinbase wallet running in the background. You just send fifty cents like that entirely for free. So that's a use case that can exist today because just to do that credit card transaction costs 30, 40, 50 cents initially before you even take a percentage. Right. So if I wanted to send you three cents because I was like, oh, that was an excellent blog post. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you three cents. You're going to send me three cents, but the merchant, me, the author, I'm going to be paying 50 cents just to receive the three cents. So that's it makes, not, that it makes no, yeah, it can't work. One more point for Bitcoin. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so what about like with Bitcoin, you know, we're tracking transactions. Mm -hmm. Um, multi-sig, we're protecting transactions pretty much, right? Um, making it harder to hack. Um, saving assets, you know, that's super cool, um, being able to track that. At some point, maybe the government, you know, U.S. government, whoever, um, using blockchain to track other types of information. Like, what other types of information can you, like, can you save information on the blockchain? And, like, how, do, how does that work? And because um, that's probably something most people don't really understand is that you, there's actually space on this on the coin, you know, in the ledger to save right. other information, right. um, and then that becomes part of this decentralized trusted system, mm -hmm. and anybody can audit it to make sure that information is there. Yeah. So one example of that is back to the deed version. So you could take a deed to a house and you could uh, put it on the blockchain which is a fancy way of just uh, this portion of a Bitcoin is marked that it's this deed. So because it's, it's on the blockchain, you can't, it can't be copied, and you then send that token, that deed, around using the blockchain. So that whoever owns that owns the deed. Whoever owns that Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. So, right. so it's almost like... If the if a Bitcoin was a physical object like the dollar, mm -hmm. it's like you're literally writing out the deed on the dollar. Sure. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that, that's fine. Like in simple terms. And whoever owns the, the thing is, you could copy that dollar. Right. Which is why we don't want to use dollars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we're already ninety three percent of all money is already digital. Yep. I, I have to verify that stat, but yeah, it's a very small percentage is still cash. And the government is constantly trying to remove cash because cash makes up a really large portion of the illicit activity that goes on. Whereas Bitcoin, it's all traceable. Right. So are you excited about where Bitcoin can go? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pumped. Cool. It's, uh, it's, it's basically, I love Mark Andreessen's writing on Bitcoin. He's probably the guy that got me most excited about it. And he says this is the single greatest technological innovation he's seen since the internet. Because you're, you're basically creating an entirely new platform for money. And never before has that ever been possible. The fintech industry, finance innovation, has largely been, uh, the growth has been hindered because of all the regulation and because of the big monopolies and oligopolies that exist. So now you have a decentralized platform that is allowing people like myself, people like the hackers at Boost, to build new applications using this technology for money. I mean, that's why you're seeing so much innovation, so much venture capital money going in. You're disrupting a whole industry. So yeah, it's an exciting time. Yeah, it's super exciting. Well, thank you for helping us sure, explain yeah this to the world, um, I'm sure they're super appreciative because this stuff is complicated. It's hard to figure out how it works and yeah. it's, it's actually right. awesome if you get a chance to, to yeah. understand it. So thank yeah, it's, it's, yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Alright, bye guys.